everyone in this video we're going to be evaluating an infinite radical we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 7 times the square root of 81 so on and so forth so these are powers of 3 starting with 3 to the first power and we have these nested square roots that go on forever so this is an infinite expression an infinite radical and we're going to evaluate it. in other words we're going to find a numerical value for this expression. Obviously, something to think about, is this expression going to converge and have a finite value, or does it diverge? Obviously, if it does, then we don't have an answer. So, in order to be able to evaluate this expression, we're going to turn this into an exponential. Now, you might be thinking about the following, because that's what I thought when I saw this first. You can go ahead and take that 3 and throw it inside. Obviously, when you put it inside, it's going to become 3 squared under the radical. And then there's another 3 squared, which is going to make 3 to the 4th power. And then you can take that 3 to the 4th power and throw it inside. But that's supposed to be 3 to the 8th power. We have 3 to the 3rd power. That's going to be 3 to the power 11. So as you go to the right, more and more, you're going to be collecting uh, higher powers of 3 along the way and then you're going to have a bunch of radicals the square root of the square root of the square root of blah 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 right so that doesn't seem like a good method because both of these things are gonna go on forever how do you know how to evaluate the power inside and how do you know what the radicals are gonna be like so instead of that we're going to look at each number separately okay we can kind of think independently here so isolate the 3 mentally, and 3 is under 1 radical. So we can write the 3 as 3 to the power 1 half, right? And then the square root of 9 is also square rooted by the other radical, so it's actually the fourth root, which means we have 9 to the power 1 fourth. Since these two things are being multiplied, I need to multiply them, okay? And then the 27 is under 3 radicals, 1, 2, and 3, as you can count this way. And that's going to be 3 to the 3rd power, the square root of the square root of the square root of 3 to the 3rd power, which is going to be 3 to the power 3 over 8. Because 27 is 3 to the 3rd, and then we need to take the 8th root of 27. Make sense? Great. And this will continue. So hopefully we can go somewhere from here. And that kind of explains the convergence issue as well, because we don't really need to do it separately. Anyways, when I input this into Wolfram Alpha, do you want to see what I got? Yes, this is what I got. Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand your query, of course. It was too complicated, right? Too bad for Wolfram Alpha. But anyways, normally it should be able to evaluate some, t some infinite expressions, but it, at this time it didn't. Maybe my prompt wasn't good enough, or if I didn't use ChatGPT or any other AI tool, I don't know what would happen in that case. If I do find out, I'll let you know. Anyways, so let's pick it up from here. We're going to be having interesting powers. First of all, this is 9. And by the way, uh, I don't think I should do it this way because I was kind of keeping the bases the same. So not the same, I mean, I was kind of... Uh, using this uh, basis and then we're going to have 81 to the power 1 over 16 so on and so forth so let's understand what is going on here first of all look at the exponents they are powers of 2 no 1 over powers of 2 or powers of 1 half how about that and the bases are powers of 3 so we have a really interesting scenario here so here's what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and write this as 3 to the power 1 half and this one we're going to write as 3 to the second power and then to the power 1 fourth which is going to give us 3 to the power 2 fourths do not turn this into 1 half because we want to see the pattern this is going to be 3 to the power 3 over 8 and then we're going to get 3 to the power 4 over 16 again do not turn this into uh, 1 fourth and then the next one is going to be 3 to the power 5 over 32 and then it'll just continue forever right so how do you handle something like this well first of all everything is being multiplied that's good second of all all the bases are the same and that's just awesome because we can go ahead and add the exponents 3 to the power 1 half plus 2 fourths plus 3 eighths 
plus 4 over 16, plus 5 over 32, and so on and so forth. Again, do not simplify any of the fractions because you really want to see the pattern here. So what is the pattern? The numerators are consecutive integers. The denominators are powers of 2. How do you handle something like that? So let's leave it at this because we're going to come back to this, right? And try to evaluate the exponent first. So how do you evaluate something like this? 1 over 2 plus 2 over 4 plus 3 over 8 plus 4 over 16 plus 5 over 32, so on and so forth. I want to write a few terms so you get the idea. And now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the arithmetic, or is it geometric? Yeah, it, it's geometric. 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the fourth power plus dot, dot, dot. This is an infinite geometric series. And as you know, if r is between negative 1 and 1, this is going to converge, and we're going to get 1 over 1 minus r. Make sense? Great. Now, what happens if you add two convergent series? Their sum is also convergent, and the limit is going to be the sum of the limits, so on and so forth. Anyways, those are different things. We're not going to get into those, but we'll simply manipulate this until we get something like that. So if you look at that expression, you're going to realize, and if I take one half to be my r, obviously you can take out a one half, no big deal, or you can write it this way. I can take r to be one half, and I can write this as r plus 2r squared plus 3r cubed plus 4r to the fourth plus 5r to the fifth. Make sense? Wow, that's amazing, right? r is being raised to a power of n, and that is being multiplied by n. So it's kind of like this type of pattern. So the question is, from a sum like this, can I get that? And the answer is yes, you can get it. In two ways, let me show you. First method is algebraic manipulation, and the second method I'll tell you later. Okay, the first way to do it is basically start with this and write a couple more terms to get the idea. This is 1 over 1 minus r. And then I'm going to start it at the r. And you should know that this is actually missing, or we can take out an r, and this is going to become r over 1 minus r, because it's the same thing multiplied by r. And then start your third one with the r squared, and it's just going to take out the r squared, and it's going to be r squared over 1 minus r. And notice that from here we're getting 1 plus 2r plus 3r squared. So if you continue this pattern, on the left-hand side you're going to get 1 plus 2r plus 3r squared plus 4r cubed plus 5r to the fourth, and so on and so forth. And in the numerator we're going to get 1r r squared, dot, dot, dot. And at the bottom you're going to have 1 minus r because that's the common denominator. You see that? Okay. Now, this is not what I want because my sum is r plus 2r squared. But that can easily be obtained. Look at this. If you multiply both sides by r, you're going to get what you need. Because notice that if I just multiply by r here, the whole thing will be what I need, right? This one. This one right here. Awesome. Great. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by r. r plus 2r squared plus 3r cubed plus 4r to the 4th power, plus 5r to the 5th power, was what I want, equals, and of course this is going to go on forever, let me erase this part, and then this equals r times 1 plus r plus r squared, dot, 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 divided by 1 minus r. Awesome. I'm almost there, I'm just going to replace r with something, but let's go ahead and simplify the right-hand side. This is the infinite geometric series again. So that will be r times 1 over 1 minus r, and then that will be divided by 1 minus r again. And that will be r over 1 minus r squared. Make sense? And this is r plus 2r squared plus 3r cubed, dot, dot, dot. Let's just leave it like that. And now I'm going to replace r with 1 half, right? When I do, it's going to become 1 half plus 2 fourths, plus 3 eighths, so on and so forth. This is what I need. And on the right-hand side, 1 half divided by 1 half squared, because 1 minus 1 half. 1 half divided by 1 fourth is just going to be, guess what? 1 half, right? Well, it's actually going to be 2. 
1 half times 4 over 1, that's going to be 2 as our answer. So the whole thing equals 2, right? The radical, yes, exactly. That's what it is. And square root of 3 is the first term, remember, and obviously your answer is supposed to be greater than root 3, and this is actually greater than root 3 because it's equal to 2. Make sense? Awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative method. I know this has been a long video. I hope you bear with me on that. Don't go away yet because we're going to manipulate this one more time to get what we want. So we start off with this again. And then this is r over 1 minus r. And then I'm going to differentiate it. So kind of think of it as a function of r, f of r. F prime of r is going to be the derivative of r is 1, the derivative of r squared is 2r, and then 3r squared plus 4r to the third, dot, dot, dot. And then now this is the quotient rule, the derivative of r times the denominator minus the de denominator, the derivative of the denominator, which is negative 1, is going to give me times r divided by 1 minus r squared, which is exactly going to give you 1 over 1 minus r squared. But again, you have to multiply by r, so it's going to be r times f prime of r. It's going to give you r plus 2r squared plus 3r cubed, which is what you want. It's going to be r over 1 minus r squared. And then plug in 1 half, and you're going to get the exact same answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.